shift from rehearsing to performing. You have to pretend you're enjoying it, even, you know. <coughs> Well, good morning. I see a few people straggling in, but we'll go ahead and get started. I'm glad you're here, and happy Mother's Day early, Mom, and all you other mothers out there. Happy Mother's Day early. Um, well, happy Sabbath. I'm glad you're here. Um, it always comes right at the right time, doesn't it? Uh, at the end of the week, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm like, ah. Oh, all right, it's Sabbath. That's that's a good thing. Um, I want to call your attention just to a couple <laughs> announcements um, in the bulletin today. We are still looking for a facilitate or facilities manager. Um, we've been looking for that for quite a while now. So if you know of anybody that would be interested in that, um, please let us know. Uh, in your bulletin, uh, congratulations to a lot of our. Graduates, uh, the Schuen household looks like it's going to be pretty busy with graduates. Um, Elizabeth, Meredith, no, Ben and Katie. So congratulations to them. Um, that's certainly a great accomplishment. Uh, we're going to have a one-day camp meeting coming up at uh, Camp Mohaven. Um, so please come out to that. Uh, they're doing a lot of renovations and a lot of. Uh, maintenance upkeep at Mohaven, and uh, we'd love to see you out there. Uh, vacation Bible School is coming up. Um, it's going to be a great time. Um, it's going to be a whole week long, so it's not just for uh, our kids. It's for all of the community uh, to come out for Vacation Bible School. Um, one small note, there will be no upfront prayer today. Uh, after second service, um, so if you are planning to come up for that, it's not going to be uh, happening today, but we'll resume <coughs> next week. Um, other than that, we're very excited uh, to have our new pastor uh, and his family today. Um, we're excited to, to hear from him, uh, get to know them, and uh, please join us for a potluck in the fellowship hall uh, after this service. So happy Sabbath. I wanted to also remind you that next Saturday evening, the choir will be doing its annual Vespers program, which will include all of our favorite selections from the year. Hope that many of you can make that. And uh, I'm very pleased and thankful that the men from United in Harmony and Marsha uh, have been able to come down and share this worship service together. I'll announce more about them and the pieces when we get into the service. Come along, there's a meeting here tonight. I 
I know you by your daily walk. There's a meeting here tonight. Just bring your Bibles, come on in. There's a meeting here tonight. I'm sorry I didn't get your music. much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to hear your voices. You sound wonderful. <coughs> Friends, uh, this is a Mother's Day weekend, right? You remember that? I'm here to remind you, if, if, in case you have forgotten, to just call mom or even visit her tomorrow morning. 
And today, I would like to honor our mothers, and I would like to begin with a story. There were these four ministers who one day were discussing what is the best Bible translation, the best version of the Bible. Uh, the first minister said, my favorite Bible is uh, King James, because it sounds so poetic, it's all <laughs> give me this sense of something that I know from my childhood. The second minister said, I love American Standard Version because it gives me insights into the original language, languages of the Bible. And the third one said, well, nothing matches NIV because it sounds contemporary. It's so readable. I can even use it to explain to my children what Christianity is all about. And then all looks were fixed on the fourth minister. And finally he opened his mouth and he said, well, my favorite Bible translation is my mom's translation. And they said, well, we didn't know that your mom translated the Bible. Well, he said, surely she did. This is the Bible I read long before I knew how to read because my mom was living out what she read in her Bible. And he said, today I'm a Christian, today I'm a minister because of my mother. God has always used mothers to shape this world. Sometimes we are tempted to think that uh, the security of this world, the future of this world, is in the hands of strong military men, of strong state men and presidents of countries. We couldn't be more wrong. This world rests in the prayers of a godly mother. Ralph uh, Waldo Emerson says that Men are, to a great degree, what their mothers have made them to be. The very uh, Hebrew word for uh, love, the strongest word for love in Hebrew, for compassion, is the word rahum, which literally means mother's womb. God couldn't find more strong word to express what love is all about. So he used the mother's womb as a as an image of what love truly is. So today we would like to honor you, mothers, for all you have done, for all you do. And I would like to ask you to bow your heads with me and let's pray a blessing on all the mothers. Lord, today I would like to pray for those special women that have given us birth who have filled our lives with love and who have given us the first impression of who you, our Heavenly Father, are is. Lord, today we ask you to bless our moms. I would like to pray also for those women who do not have any biological children on their own, yet nevertheless, they mother and mentor others as their own children. Bless the Lord to do an exceptional job in raising other women to be what you have called them to be. Today we pray for the single mothers in our congregation who never planned to mother alone. Lord, give them the assurance that you are father of the fatherless and a husband of the single one. Today we want to lift up mothers who had poor mothers themselves, yet they decided to break this vicious circle and to give a new example of true motherhood to their own children and grandchildren. And last but not least, I would like to pray for those boys and girls in our midst, in our congregation whose mothers deserted them when they needed them the most. Lord, comfort those motherless people and assure them 
that you are not like their prodigal mothers, but you love them dearly and you will never desert them. May all mothers I mentioned in this prayer and those I have forgotten to mention be blessed, be honored, and be filled with joy for the wonderful job they do in this world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ we pray and all the people said together, Amen. Amen. <coughs> Could we all now bow our heads or as far as possible kneel as we have our morning prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this beautiful morning. We thank you for this day of rest that you gave us years ago. You, you know, Lord, what we needed to come away from all the things that happen in the world and Lord, there's so much happening with the government and our communities, our societies in the world. We ask, Father God, that you would take charge of all these things and let these people know that you're still on the throne. And we ask, Lord, that you would bless all of our friends and loved ones who are on our prayer list, those with illnesses, those with financial problems, marital problems, spiritual problems. Lord, the devil is just going rapid, and we need you to get him under control. We thank you so much for your son who died for us. We thank you for our lives, for all the things that we have. We pray, Lord, for the persecuted church. There are people in countries who have to hide to serve you. We don't have to do that here, Lord that they may come when we have to do it. We ask, Lord, that we would be ready for that. We thank you for all of your blessings, and we thank you for our mothers and for the gentlemen that have come to sing, and everyone else, Lord, as well. In your son's name we pray. Amen. to deal with money. What's that chairman called, Pastor? What chairman? Am? Okay. I'm going to take it on my, up on myself and ask everyone to stand up and say hi and get a smile on your face. Everybody, stand up, meet somebody, love somebody today before we do the offering.
Now, isn't that nice? Everybody has a smile on their face this Mother's Day weekend. As you go back to your seats, we're going to talk a little bit about the offering. <coughs> and I am happy to see that George bought his borrowed mules from up north down here. <laughs> we're the borrowed mules down here. <laughs> he beats on us every week. But if you sing under George, you're going to sing right, George. Right? <laughs> Amen. Welcome, guys. So I got you all to stand up and smile because at our last board meeting, and I hear about money twice a month, I'm on the finance committee, and I'm on the, the church board. I know where we're lacking, and we're lacking in some areas now. We have guests this morning, so I'm not going to hit you too hard. The next time, we're going to get down. You understand? It? You understand? <laughs> and uh, I'm going to have surgery next month, uh, June 13th, and I might miss the Sabbath. I don't know. And I, don't worry, I'll be back. It's not open heart or anything. You can't get rid of me that easy, okay? But the whole thing is, we're running behind every month. And I hear it twice a month, and I'm sick and tired of hearing it, okay? Now, our pastor brought... Uh, like a point, a PowerPoint presentation to us. And he pointed out several things as a vision for the church. And a couple of things that really stuck with me was discipling and cheerful givers. Now he brought up the point, and I, I would hope that the pastor would bring that to the whole church because we need it. Because we need to get waken in this church. As they say as a Baptist, waken. I know you say working. But the thing is, those things stuck with me. And he also brought up the point that it's up to the, just up to the pastor to disciple churches die. Because it's our job. So you guys are going to be working this year. I should have gotten a real amen on that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Secondly, cheerful giving. I notice sometimes when I take the offering with the deacons, sometimes twice a month, <laughs> People don't smile during that time. I smile. I know I had a patient say the other day, I heard you smiling and laughing. It just made me feel, feel at ease because this man is going to put me to sleep. He's a happy guy. He's going to let me live, praise the Lord. <laughs> and when patients die on this, too much paperwork. However, uh, <laughs> and that's true. However, sometimes I take the offering and you put the plate to people, you smile, and they, sometimes you get someone like a Pharisee, they put a $5 bill in. <laughs> so, as the ushers come, or the deacons come by, and they'll be coming forward in a minute, smile, because God does love a cheerful giver. Now that I have a smartphone instead of that dumb phone I used to have, <laughs> if you go into... 2 Corinthians, it says, but, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according to as he purposes, purposeth in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen to that? So all I have to say is, as the deacons come by this morning, whether you give or not, give them a smile, okay? <laughs> deacons come forward. And I want to tell you this little story. And if you were born in the 40s, when I was born, you would remember this. It used to be once or twice a week, this old guy would come down the alley with a push cart. We called him the junk man or the rag man. And he always had this scruffy outfit on. And when you see him coming, I'd always run and find my mother because my mother used to say, if you're bad, I'm going to give you to the rag man. <laughs> and that scared me. You could hear him in the distance. Any rags? Any rags? Any rags? Any bones? Any bottles today? The same old story in the same old way. Any rags? And then at one point, he'd get upset. Any rags? Well, I want to paraphrase that this morning. Any money? Any money? 
We like cash, we like checks, you can pay it online. Smile when you give it, everything will be fine. Amen. <laughs> I'll sell CDs out in the lobby. <laughs> Let's bow our heads. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to, to give to you. You're such a wonderful God, and you give to us every day, every time we wake up, every breath, everything that we take, Lord, it belongs to you. And we want to give back to you that which belongs to you and that extra that we need for our budgetary offering every month. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to introduce myself. I'm uh, uh, Pastor Julian. I have the privilege to be uh, the lead pastor and the preaching pastor in Worthington. Uh, yet today, I'm not going to be preaching. Uh, today, we are celebrating a milestone in the last uh, six months of prayer and looking for a pastor to be next to me and uh, to join me in the leadership of uh, our church. And today you're going to hear uh, the choice and the answer of our prayers. So I would like to invite uh, uh, Jeremy and in a minute uh, Brooke is going to join us also. Jeremy, would you please come here? <laughs> It was uh, approximately three years ago, I don't remember the exact date, but uh, both Jeremy and his wife, Brooke, uh, they're ministers, by the way. Uh, Jeremy, you know, he's a pastor, and uh, Brooke, uh, she's a chaplain. And uh, I sit on the ordination committee of Ohio Conference of Churches. And uh, we were interviewing them to see their process in the, of development. Are they ready for ordination? And uh, this day we interviewed several people. And after we had the chance to meet uh, Brooke and Jeremy, in the evening I went home and I told my wife, wow, today I met a couple. They are absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. They love God. It's so seldom to see people who are deeply in love with God. You go to churches and people love God somehow. But now and then you meet people who their very presence exhumes this deep desire to serve God and to love Him, and they cannot imagine their life in any other way but serving God. Amen. And I told my wife, one day, if we have a chance to get a youth minister in our church, I would like to have Jeremy. Mm -hmm. And uh, six months ago, when uh, Pastor Bob <coughs> announced that he is uh, leaving us, and I said, oh boy, I started thinking to myself, well, maybe this is uh, going to be the answer to my uh, prayers. But I decided, as we started the process of a search for our next uh, youth pastor, I said to God, God, I'm not going to hijack the process. I absolutely uh, was in love with uh, Jeremy and Brooke. But I said, I'm going to let the search committee do their uh, due diligence in searching for the next pastor. We had a lot of people, very highly qualified. And discussing the, the resumes, so finally we narrowed down to several, and we invited the candidates and we interviewed them. And Brooke and Jeremy, I would like to tell you that after the interview, when we talked with the search committee, all of them were absolutely in love with you. <laughs> so today you're here not because I pulled any strings, not because I hijacked the process of search. I promise God I'm not going to do that, and I didn't. <laughs> You're here today because uh, these seven people who sat in this committee, they said, we want these people here. We believe, they said, that they are what we need for the transformation of our culture in our church. Yeah. And uh, thank you very much for accepting our call. I want you to know that you are prayed for, you are prayed about, you are an answer to prayer, you are loved. And as I told you before, when I went through the process of search uh, six years ago, um, my, uh, my head elder pulled me aside, uh, several other leaders, and told me, you be yourself here in this church. You, can, you have the freedom to be yourself. Well, last night, my wife told you the same. Mm -hmm. you, you be yourself. We're going to love you the way you are. We, don't, we are not here to change you. We are here to support your ministry. Be yourself and let God change you. Yes, and uh, uh, I, I just uh, said a few words about you, Jeremy. Let me talk a little bit about Brooke. <laughs> and also, they have a baby girl, JJ. Uh, I, I don't see her. She's taking her Sabbath rest. Oh, Sabbath rest. Okay, yeah. she deserves one. <laughs> and you too. <laughs> uh, I would like to tell you as a minister that it is absolutely impossible to be a good minister, to be a good pastor. <clears throat> without having a spiritual wife as a support. So I do believe, Jeremy, that you're here today not just because of your own talents and your spirituality. I do believe that people chose you because they chose also Brooke. They were absolutely impressed with you, Brooke. 
and I do, I do know this from personal experience, my ministry would have not been even half of what it is mm. if it were not for my wife and my daughter. Mm. I remember when our girl was uh, about uh, Danish and they asked her, what does your mom or your dad do? She would uh, respond, we are ministers. Mm. Mm. And this is how it is. There'll be a lot of high expectations from church and non-church folk. They're gonna have special standards for, for you and for your girl. And I just pray, may God give you wisdom how to handle those people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, on behalf of our congregation, I would like to welcome you. And please, uh, friends, let's give a round of applause to our new... We have a few, a few gifts um, which my wife and uh, our church secretary Miriam are going to give you together with Laura. Uh, by the way, our church secretary Miriam, she is uh, uh, a wife of a minister. Her, her husband is a chaplain in uh, Kelvin. Are, are you somewhere here? Yes. Kelvin is there. He's, uh, he's waving at us. He's a chaplain in Mount Carmel uh, uh, East. And I know that uh, St. Anne joined them also, so those of you who go to St. Anne, you may see him because he's going to be your chaplain as well. So uh, treat him well and treat Mir Miriam well, well. You may end up in the hospital and, uh, <laughs> and Kelly may be your chaplain. So. This is for JJ. Oh, all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, you're welcome if you want to, to say a few words to the congregation, if not. Well, thank you, church family. That sounds nice, doesn't it? Church family, yes. uh, for your warm welcome. The, the second I came into this church, I felt like I was part of the family. Uh, so thank you for making my wife and I and my daughter feel welcome. And I'm looking forward to see what God is going to do here in the next... Uh, in, in the next weeks and months and years as we minister side by side with you uh, here in Worthington. So thank you for the opportunity. We're humbled and we're excited to see what God is going to do here. Thank you. Thank you. And right now we'll have an opportunity. She's also a chaplain and she serves as a chaplain in uh, SVA. She is a chaplain at uh, Academy, so she deals with kids every single day, so she knows how, how it goes. So she'll have a, a story to our little children. So children, if you'd like to join us here and just take a seat here on the stage and on the steps, and let's hear a story. All right, children, come on down. We've got plenty of room here on the steps for you. Boys and girls, my name is Chappie. My name is Chappie. That is short for Chaplain Wong because my students in Dayton just felt like Chaplain Wong was too long. So my name is Chappie. And today I'm going to tell you a real story that happened to some of our very, very good friends while they were missionaries in Africa. One day when they went to church, a woman walked in and brought a dead chicken. What would you bring a dead chicken to church for? Any ideas? Any guesses? No guesses. No one knows why you would bring a dead chicken to church, right? Well, this woman brought a dead chicken to church. You want to come and sit down? Because that was going to be her offering for the day. What? Why would you give a dead chicken as an offering at church? 
Well, the reason why boys and girls is because over in Africa, a lot of the women stay at home. And if they want to give an offering, they have to give something that they have either made or raised. And that is particularly what this woman was doing. She was raising chickens. And so she brought her offering that day right down the front, all the way right in front of the podium. She put it there beside the other offerings. There were dry beans. There were mangoes. There was all kinds of millet there as well as part of the offering. And people bring it there to the front so that everybody can see what they have. And then the pastor will take it to the market and he'll sell it and take that money and use it for the church. Or sometimes they'll use it as part of their potluck as well. But here came the woman with the dead chicken and she laid it down so pleased that she could give of her best to Jesus. Well, the service went on kind of like this service is going right now. And they had the prayer and they had the songs and the pastor stood up and he started to preach. And boys and girls, you will never guess what happened next. All of a sudden, they heard, <laughs> and the chicken jumped up and ran out the back. Now, people didn't want to let it go because that woman had tried to bring her best to Jesus and her best just ran out the back door and started running around the building. So church members got up and they started running after the chicken who was trying to escape. Finally, somebody caught it and they were able to contain it and bring it right back here. But that day, the dead chicken came back to life. Boys and girls, you will never know until you get to heaven what marvelous things Jesus can do when we give him our best. When we give Jesus our hearts, he makes us our church. He makes it a loving community. When we give Jesus our school, he makes it a place where angels love to dwell. When we give him our families, he makes us strong units, strong communities that teach us more about him. Boys and girls will never understand what can happen when we bring Jesus our best. Even the dead might come back to life. And today, if you listen carefully, Pastor Jeremy is going to tell us another story, not about a chicken, but about someone else who came back to life. Let's bring our best to Jesus. Let's pray before we go back to our seats. Jesus, we thank you and praise you for the gifts that you give us. Help us to remember to always bring our best back to you. In Jesus' name, all God's children said together, amen. amen. Thank you for listening, boys and girls. You can go back to your seats. Well, they're finding their way back. Let me introduce uh, United in Harmony, a group of Christian men uh, who uh, consolidated and grew out of a church quartet and now uh, sing all over uh, central Ohio. Uh, they're from all walks of life, um, from farming, shoe repair, lawyering. We all are kept in, in uh, our best behavior. We have a county prosecutor, um, people in banking, insurance, and, and other businesses. And I welcome them tonight or today. Uh, it's been great to, to get to know these guys and Marsha Burkhart, uh, our accompanist. We sang a Wayne Hooper arrangement for the call to worship. We're gonna do a Wayne Hooper arrangement in the middle of this selection uh, collection of three songs. Um, I grew up listening to Wayne Hooper's arrangements with the King's Herald's Quartets, and I'm sure if you listen to them often as you were growing up, you'll recognize Steal Away. Um, we'll do a, an arrangement by Mosey Lister, Restore My Soul, Steal Away, and How Can I Keep From Singing Your Praise by Jack, an arrangement by Jack Schrader.
sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. How he left his home in glory for the cross of Calvary. There is an endless song echoes in my soul. I hear the storms may come, I am holding on to the rock I cling. How can I keep from singing your praise? How can I ever say enough? How amazing is your love? How can I keep from shouting your name? I know I am loved by the King, and it makes my heart inviting your friends so we were blessed this morning thank you gentlemen may god bless you to keep on praising his name and never stop praising him friends it's time for the word of god and i would like uh, to invite uh, uh, pastor jeremy to join me here i'm going to pray for him and his ministry and then he is going to take take it away and lead us in the word of god heavenly father Thank you for the blessing we have uh, in Jeremy and Brooke. Today, as he uh, begins his ministry here in Worthington Seventh Adventist Church, bless him, bless Brooke, bless little uh, JJ, and let them shine, Lord, for you. Give them wisdom how to connect with people and some of those who are running. Bless them, Lord, to always stay close to your heart. And Lord, bless all their efforts in reaching out to our young people and to those uh, who are not that young but are young in spirit. 
Thank you, our Lord, for your word. Bless us now and let us hear your admonition to us. In the name of your Son, Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. It's good to be here with you in Worthington. Um, actually, this week I found out that my family roots uh, here to Worthington goes back much longer than I expected. I just got uh, an email from my aunt who lives in Texas. Her and her husband actually met here at the old Worthington church and they got married there. Uh, she worked at Worthington Foods and he taught at Ohio State University. And so they were very excited when they heard that their nephew was going to be the youth pastor at their old church. Uh, so I thought that was neat. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. Amen for mothers. Amen. Amen. My mother is actually somewhere here. She, uh, she made the trip up uh, to see her favorite son. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so happy Mother's Day, Mom. I don't see you right now, but wherever you are, happy Mother's Day. I wanted to thank especially Olivia Gittins for playing the piano during our offertory. Actually, Olivia, her sister Ben, her younger brother Nick, and their mother Melinda are here. Uh, they are members at uh, my former church, and they made the trip up here. Olivia is a magician on the piano, and so is her brother. Uh, I'm not biased or anything, but I think they are world-class musicians. For doing that for us. Um, be before we get started real quickly, um, at the end of the service, I'm going to have a survey. I'm going to have some business cards uh, with my contact information with me at the back. And what I want to do is I want to hear feedback from the church on what they want to see in youth ministry and, and what is the, the main thing that we need to be focusing on. I want to hear uh, the uh, high school students, young adults, parents, grandparents. I want to hear everyone's feedback. Uh, on what we can do. So again, I'll have surveys with me at the back after the service. If you would be so kind to fill one out and, and give them to me afterwards, that would be greatly appreciated. All right, without further ado, let's start uh, again with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, we come here yearning, longing for a word from you. We ask that you would speak to us and that we will leave here changed and transformed by your spirit. Father, may your name and your name alone be glorified and hide me behind the shadow of the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Barna, who is a research institute out of California, back in 2013, partnered with the North American Division um, to study how many youth and young adults are leaving our church? And this study was monumental because up until this time, Barna had only uh, uh, partnered with evangelical churches. Uh, they did statistics on evangelical churches. So for the first time, uh, for the first time, I think in the history of our denomination, we were able to find statistics on our youth and young adults done by Barna. So Barna, uh, the president, David Kinneman, and uh, Dan Jackson, our president, and, and, and Dr. James Black combined, and they surveyed the youth and young adults in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, how many are staying, and the, and the reason for staying, and, and, and how many are leaving. David Kinneman, in his book, You Lost Me, uh, highlights six cultural grievances that young adults have against the church. Uh, and these are the six cultural grievances uh, that young adults have against the church. They're listed up here in front of you. The first one is doubtless, which means that the church tends to, to run away from doubt, that they don't like hard questions. They don't like answering or talking about hard subjects. The second one is exclusive, which means that the church is elitist in its relationship and they feel that they're above everyone else. The third cultural grievance is anti-science. They feel that the church doesn't like talking about science and answering the questions, and they feel that their beliefs are anti-science. The fourth 